covering the week's top tech stories with a slight Linux bias. If you enjoy your weekly tech news with a slight Linux bias, become part of our fleet. Choose your rank at patreon.com slash category 5. Let's get into it. Scientists have created a plane that flies without fuel. That's coming up, but first, as the COVID-19 pandemic blurs the lines between home life and job life for many, the EU is fighting for home workers to have the right to disconnect. Lawmakers have passed a non-binding resolution arguing that home workers have the right to be unreachable by work. The European Parliament Employment Committee voted 31 to 6 with 18 abstentions in favor of allowing people to take time off and urge the European Commission to create rules that catch up with the new reality of work. Alex Egia Saliba, who spearheaded the resolution, says the pressure to always be reachable, always available is mounting, resulting in unpaid overtime and burnout. Many of us can relate. How about you? Has the need to work from home caused the line between work and private life to become hazy? Comment below and let us know. Lawmakers in favor of the new resolution say workers should be allowed to be offline without suffering employer retribution as a result. The right to, to disconnect in the EU must now be approved by the full chamber before it can be submitted to the commission and state government for a vote. You know, oh, sorry, I'm just taking a call from work. No, you're not. I you know, need to be able right? to turn off. Man. I need to be able to disconnect. Yes, I'm, I'm busy doing my own thing. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I love this story, and I like that uh, in, in the EU, they're kind of taking that approach to protect the workers because it's been a problem now for quite some time, yeah. even before COVID, with the rise of you know e-commerce and internet connectivity where people are not being able to turn off. Mm -hmm. Like I remember when I, you know, started at, uh, you know, my former job in 2007, I think, something okay. like that. And I had the BlackBerry. Yep. And that was Constantly always with buzzing. me. Yeah, like I'd be laying in bed and 11:30 I'd get an email that comes in it's like Oh, yes. You know, and I never turned off. Yeah. And it became such an addiction almost. Sure. Not that I wanted to work, but it was like my mind was always going, is there an email waiting for me? Is there something there? Yeah. I love that they've taken this approach. Isn't it interesting, though, Jeff, that by responding to those pings, you're actually training your coworkers and your employers that you're always available. Yes. And, and it's a hard thing. It's like, where is that line? And, and you know, we're, we're probably speaking to a lot of IT managers and, and folks that work in the IT department. And, and realistically, I mean, servers go down regardless of whether it's past 5 p.m. or not. That's right. And guess what? We're the folks that have to run into the, to the office and take care of things. I mean, yeah. how many times have I spent a Saturday fixing up a server or doing something to do oh, with yeah. work because something's down and, and it's got to be attended to. It's like you can't, it's not a nine to five job when That's you work right. in IT. And a lot of things these days are not nine to five jobs. And you're lucky if you have something that you can actually shut down and say, call it quits at five o'clock in the afternoon. Yeah. But realistically, and especially in today's, you know, kind of COVID-19 landscape where hey, people are working from home and when the computer, when the email comes in or when the ping comes in on Zoom, you've got to be there. Yep. And you feel like you've got to be there. And, and maybe that's part of it too, is maybe employers have to say, okay, so staff, here's our policy. We understand that you've got a life as well. We just expect you to put in a good, honest, hardworking day yep. and, uh, and then deal with the stuff that you need to deal with at home, but it's hard. I've been self-employed. I've worked at home. Yeah. Oh, for sure. And I mean, like in, you know, my former career as a, a labor contract negotiator, it used to be the thing was, you know, you've got your hours of work and then there's yeah. on call and then yeah. the, like all the kind on of stuff. On call. That's a burn. Yeah. Basically, like Basically, you, you're, you're answering the phone no matter what. Well, yeah. And so those kind of things almost have been lost because it's like, oh, you're not really on the clock, but you're just always available. Yeah. And so, you know, it becomes that fine line between going too far and, you know, dare I say it, abusing the employee's time mm -hmm. uh, versus being able to have maximum productivity and exposure to address issues as they happen. Yeah. And so, it, I mean, with online work and whatnot, it has changed the landscape of, like you said, a typical nine to five. And most jobs that have gone online are no longer nine to fives. Yeah. They're kind of, you know, your, your typical <laughs> full-time work, but around the clock. Yeah. 
I envy um, self-employed individuals who know to call it quits at five. And yeah. After five, it's like, all right, kids, let's have fun. Yeah. It's it's time to to hang out with mom or dad, and uh, you know that's that's a hard thing to accomplish when you are like only a phone call away. That's right. And it's almost like you know your phone is in your pocket now, and you're you're stuck with it ringing. If uh, so, it's like have a separate phone. <laughs> yeah. What's your answer? I mean, we're all in this together. What is your solution to this? particular issue. It may be a law that has to come down from the government or it may be something that you've established within your own within your own infrastructure of your company. Mm -hmm. We'd love to hear about it. Comment below. Here's Becca. A plane that flies without propellers or jets and uses no fuel sounds like something from Star Trek, but apparently it's a thing. The secret is to use ion thrusters, which also sound like something from sci-fi. Next up, molecular teleportation. The team responsible is from the Massachusetts Institute of Technology. They say the electro-aerodynamic powered plane uses a propulsion system to fly, which could lead to new aircraft that are quieter and mechanically simpler than what we have today. What's more, they don't produce any fossil fuel emissions. All right, to be fair, we're not carrying passengers anytime soon. The aircraft has a wingspan of just five meters and weighs around two and a half kilograms, but it works. Having taken two years to create, the plane works by removing electrons from nitrogen molecules in the air, which produces ions. These are accelerated toward the back of the plane, creating an ionic wind, which gives the plane thrust to move through the air. Wouldn't it be incredible to have an RC version of this tech? Think about a quadcopter and how quickly its battery depletes. Now put an FPV camera on one of those ion-powered planes and rip through the air at high speeds for hours. While that raises some frightening militaristic possibilities, from a hobbyist perspective, it sounds incredible. What would you do with a small plane that could fly without fuel? Post your comment below. While quite inefficient at low speed indoor test flights, the group said that as the speed increases, so does the efficiency. In theory, when moving at 670 miles per hour, the plane could be 50% efficient. It's still only a prototype, but scientists believe that the future possibilities are very promising. I think this is so neat that we now have, now granted it's a small version, but you have... Itty bitty. You what have, is this, an airplane for ants? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but you have this propulsion system that doesn't require fuel, that has its own ability to convert within the air and keep going. I mean, in theory, if you could hook this sucker up to, say solar panels you could have non-stop flight non-stop theoretically unreal like that's wild becca makes some really interesting points about like quadcopter flight and yeah i love flying my quadcopters but she's right the battery is like in some of them it's like 15 minutes flight time mm -hmm. and so you buy extra batteries so that you can swap them in the field and you get you know 45 minutes flight time but you're still dealing with the fact that the battery doesn't last very long if you ever yeah. shoot any video in the air, it's the same kind of thing. Like you get up there, you take some video, and then you got to land and take a, change the battery. Yep. Well, here's an opportunity, something that can actually uh, power itself, essentially. Yeah. But will it ever see passenger flight? That's the thing. Like, it, so it's more like it's going to be tough. Nah, it's going to be more. I think um, you know smaller payload payloads, and this is where you know I think in terms of a camera or you know being able to to shoot video but they're they're flying like an airplane so yeah it's going to be moving pretty quickly so what about now we've had um henry bailey brown on the show to talk about how he uses his quadcopter yes. to shoot um 3d um uh imagery yes. so that he can then convert that into unreal engine and uh, even 3d print uh, buildings and things like mm -hmm. that but looking at topography and using a technology like this to keep constant tabs on changing landscapes or on like the we think about like Bing Maps or Google Earth and the way that they're able to recreate our planet in basically what to us seems like real time like sci-fi yeah. but being able to have something in the air that can just fly around the globe all the time taking this imagery and shooting it back to their servers and making it like virtually, you know, much more real time than the satellite imagery that they have now that's four years old. Yeah. 
right? So yeah. could those be things? But you know, what, what, what kind of things spring to mind for you? And, and of course, you know, in the back of my mind, there is that nagging, I fear that the military would get a hold of this kind of technology. Guaranteed they're already using it, that's I why know, it's out. I know, and so this I know. This is probably from a military contract. <laughs> yeah, this is probably going through your head. And, and so there, that is very ominous, and it's because this is a really, really cool technology. Totally. But like so many cool technologies, it could be used for good and it could be used for, we'll, we'll say, evil. Yep. Uh, but we, you know, what could we do with this that is good? That's so, what I'd love to know. And that's where my head went. Mm -hmm. Like, the fa what actually caught my attention the most in this story was the fact that it was indoor flight. Like, initially, I was like, oh, they're flying it outside. But when they're like, oh, our test's indoors, I'm going, hold on, this is indoors. Okay. So could you theoretically take this, shrink it down? I mean, who knows what the components require. Are you picturing a fly? Well, no, no. <laughs> not that small. But, like, how neat would it be if they could take this propulsion system to the point where it's... Um, you know, for lack of a better word, levitation, where you can have a stable object. It that has to be moving, though. Well, it, it has, has to yep. right now, but if you, because it's taking the ions from the air and converting them for that propulsion system. Yeah. So I don't know what, you know, the airflow is out behind or anything like that, but could it, you know, I, I'm, I'm thinking, could it be converted to things in your home where it's like, you don't have to worry about ladders anymore because you can have you know, scaffolding or some some sort of painting unit We're that goes up for there, you. Jeff. But I'm just thinking the internal home use. I'm like, <laughs> this could change the way we build homes so that you don't have people falling off. How does he come up with this stuff? What are your ideas? He like, wants to build homes and get rid of ladders. This thing is like five meters wide and it can but only... But the tech, and and little you tiny, could just convert it. That could be cool. Itty living space, Jeff. Itty bitty living space. <sighs> See, I'm not confined to the initial thoughts. Yeah, all right. So when it can carry a human, Jeff wants it to lift him up onto his roof so that he can put up the Christmas lights a little easier. <laughs> I don't Perfect. Do Christmas lights. <laughs> <laughs> My lights have been up for three hey, years. Give us your ideas. Comment below. Don't miss the other stories we're following this week. First, there will not be a CentOS Linux 9. Plus, Debian officially supports the Pinebook Pro. Subscribe to our YouTube channel to make sure you catch the full stories. From the Category 5.TV newsroom, I'm Becca Ferguson. Thanks for watching.